So if you have the 52 stitches per inch, how many, how many inches around was it? Um, it was about 10 inches. It, I mean, it was huge. I could, I could, you know, I, I did like five rows and I mean, it was, you know, like just figure out. <laughs> I just ripped it, it out. So. It, is, it is loose. Um, yeah. Which is why people are talking about adding a ribbing. So let's see. So if I go, maybe I better show you this one. So this one came out about right. Where's my camera? There we are. Um, so it is, it is pretty loose. Okay. It seems like yours is even bigger. Um, what I might do is take. It, it was, I mean, I, if you move over a little in front of your face, I could see it a little better. But yeah, I mean, it was probably like that. It just seemed like that would be huge for a mitten. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like, like a boxing glove. <laughs> what you could do is, is rather than go all the way down to 40, take four or eight st stitches out. So instead of okay. 52 stitches, do 48 stitches. I just thought this, this yarn seemed really big to put on size two needles too. So that's why I, I want to make sure I understood what the heck I was doing. It is, it is really dense and tight. Yeah. Um, so... If it starts to get um, a little wonky, one of the things I found is that, that my, my row gauge changed as well as my stitch gauge compared to the, the pattern, the, the original mittens. Um, so, but I think on, on the whole, the shape will work. You know, I would just pay real attention to your desired length. Yeah, because I mean, yeah, when I changed to the, I mean, I guess it goes to the size three needles after the cuff is done so it's yep. going to be a big bigger, difference. So, Actually, i think yeah. there's a big difference between a two and a three yeah um and it got more comfy yeah um, but if you already think the the cuff is wide it'll be even wider on a three so i would right hang in there and then switch to three. <laughs> <laughs> i'll go with 40 and see what that looks like that's what i wondered if it got smaller but it doesn't look like there's any decreases if anything there's there's a couple increases so Yep, so it increases, you increase by eight stitches to make room for the thumb. Okay. So around that gusset, you're gonna make gusset. it that gets wider. And then over the top of it, you decrease by four. Um, when you, when you, after you, you know, you make the hole for the thumb by taking right. the stitches off and casting on over the top. And then you make a little sort of reverse the V, but I only took it down by four, not by eight. So you okay. have room for your fingers. Um, but it makes it a little more narrow because like this yellow one looks, it got really fat. Yeah. Very <laughs> um, <laughs> um, And I wanted it to be a little more narrow like the original one. So I, I did this on the other one. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Sure. Anybody else? Anybody need anything that would be helpful? No, nope, I'm gonna dive in. Oh my. Can I ask you a oh? Can I ask you a question? That's it's not about the pattern. Um, it's about the shakers and knitting. Mm -hmm. Do you know? Um, do you guys have any artifacts? Did they use regular knitting needles, or did they use like a knitting belt or like a knitting stick or anything like that? Do you know? I haven't seen anything particularly like that in the collection. I would imagine, I think knitting belts were pretty, um, pretty commonplace for mm -hmm. you know, quite a while, but you would, you may know that better than I. For those who don't know. I don't know, because I just found out yeah, about them and I thought, I, I don't have one, but it sounds like a great idea. So I want to try to get a hold of one. <laughs> I once uh, saw to Google anything, there's actually like a world championship speed knitting. Mm, those yes. people they have like holsters, like <laughs> the <laughs> best of knitting. Because <laughs> it says it can take a beginner and get them to have an even nice gauge and tension like within a couple of hours of learning how to do it. So it sounds fantastic. So I want to get a hold of one and try it out. <laughs> the knitting belts you can get, um, you can order them um, from Shep. They have them, you can order them. Oh, okay. Yeah. Have you, um, have you used one? Uh, no, I haven't, but I don't know if the Shakers would have had them because they're really traditional over in the Shetland Islands and Fair Isle. Um, right. I but don't since know. They came, 
Yeah, I thought maybe since the, the originator came from Manchester, I thought maybe, you know, I don't know whether yeah. they use that in the cities or if that was just like in the Shetland area. Yeah, I, I don't know. I know um, Shetland is known for them, so I don't right. know. I mean, they could have came over later on, but I know Shetland is known for creating all of that. So I don't know if the Shakers picked it up later or, or who, I don't know. I've never seen Shetland, all my research on it, I've never seen them over here. So unless they were brought over later, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But you can get them and I can get the link for you. Um, but yeah, you can buy them. I think they're like um, 25, um, yeah. Ounce, so about thirty-two dollars. Mm -hmm. That's so, right. Yeah. Trying to find the long pins is the challenge. Yeah, no, that's, that's the other no. thing. I have them. I use them. Um, th they have them too. The long needles that okay. go with them sell them also. Those, those are. It's all of my metal because I break all my wooden ones. <laughs> They're metal. They are metal. Okay. Yeah, they are metal. So. Speaking but, um, specifically about the Canterbury Shakers, I know that they have a huge uh, they have a huge room full of knitting machines, and I don't know when the knitting machines came in, but knitting machines themselves have been in the United States since uh, before the 1900s. I mean, well into the 1800s. I want to say probably around the Civil War period, they had knitting machines here. So. Oh, okay. um, I do know that their production knitting that they did, they did a lot of um, uh, like Letterman sweaters. That was all done on machine. Oh, okay. They were, um, you know, we like to, it, it's easy to sort of romanticize them that everything was handmade, but these were practical people who were in business, man. So right, right. found a cost-effective, efficient way to do it. Do it, yeah. Um, as long as it was good enough, they, yeah. I'm, I'm sure they would have done it. Yeah, and they love technology. So, right. you know, they uh, the Shakers were the first ones to have electricity around here because they built their own generator. You know, Concord, which is our state capital, didn't have electricity, but Canterbury did. That's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think they would approve of the Zoom meetings for sure. Oh, totally, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Well, I hope you guys all have a great time and um, email me. And I tried to, uh, I've done, I, I, have, I must confess, I have yet to knit a pair of these things. I have knit one of, of all different kinds. And I have also discovered that if you don't pay attention um, and you watch TV, you accidentally, this is what happens when an opera glove meets a mitten because you just keep going and it's the longest thing you've ever seen. So I'm going to warm to my elbow. But um, <laughs> So we'll see. So I look forward to seeing all of yours. And um, if you'd like to sign up, we'll see you at the next Zoom. All right. Thank, Thank you so much. much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.